Hickok 45, look what I have, an STI. Thanks to the gun parlor in Worcester, Massachusetts. Thank you, Justin. We appreciate this. This is one fine gift. If you know anything about the STI, you know it is one of their premier competition pistols. Now that doesn't mean I can shoot it well, but it is extremely popular in competition. The STI, it has been for quite a while. Let's take a couple of shots with it. Got him, I think. Got him, I think. Yes, it's hard to miss. What about this? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Let's move. Shoot somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's empty already. Wow, 20 round magazine too. So yes, this is an STI and uh, we're gonna shoot it today and talk a little bit about it, we appreciate that. Now let's look at this baby. This is the STI Edge and it is, has been one of the premier firearms in uh, competition circles. All right, now that doesn't mean that's all it's good for necessarily, but that's where it excels and where it has been used extensively. It's a, oh, a finely crafted machine, I guess you could say. And if you know anything about STI, I'm not really telling you anything. Now you may have some horror stories about STI. I don't know. I've not had experience with them back when I was uh, doing some competition. I never did own one. And I was getting more or less kind of burned out on, on that uh, about the time these came along in, in big numbers because they, they were uh, dreamed up in terms of that grip and everything, the high capacity, uh, the STI in early 90s, okay? And I, it's about the time I was just going occasionally, but I knew guys were coming in with them and gals and bragging on them. And I had a good friend that put a lot of money in one of these things and he wasn't one to, to do that at the drop of a hat. And uh, they were the gun. Uh, they may still be the gun. I don't get out on the competition uh, trail very much, but they have an extremely good reputation, I think, still, and are pretty popular, and they're expensive. Yeah. You're talking $2,000 basically and up. You know, so, well, they may have some under that, but as far as the 2011 series, which is what this is, you know, 1911, 2011, you can see right on the side, it's 2011. That's because they, they really took the 1911 uh, to a different level. I won't say better, but to another level, really, and uh, updated it, so to speak, with a high capacity frame. Because a lot of people in competition were wanting to get more rounds in a 1911 style gun. Because the 1911 style guns, in competition especially, is still, I guess, probably the ultimate platform or one of them because you can have such a great trigger like this one about a three and a half pounder it's a nice trigger and uh, it's the biggest difference between this and all the other guns that were showing up about that time where you didn't have the capacity of the 1911 that you would with a Glock 17 or some of the others and uh, so they addressed that and they built this uh, it's a what do they call it a fiber filled plastic you know I guess uh, another name for some kind of polymer, but it's strong. They, they built a frame, a lower part of the frame out of that so that you could have higher capacity. You know, these magazines, these old 20 right here. The one I started with over here is not a 20 rounder. I think it's a 16 or 17 round magazine. Uh, a little bit shorter, it fits flush, you know, okay. And, uh, but you get more rounds in one. And, uh, you know, it's again, made for competition pretty much. You got a competition trigger, you got that weight there, you know, there's not a rail. I think you can get them with a rail, but it's, it's, it's still kind of a heavy gun, even though you got this, uh, you know, polymer plastic 
uh, frame more or less, the lower part of the frame. You'll notice the entire frame is not polymer, just the trigger guard and the lower part of the frame. This is steel right here, okay, and even around here where the slide connects is steel. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but that's great for competition. And of course they come in all uh, sorts of uh, chamberings, 9, 40, 45, I think, and 10 millimeter, and I'm not, uh, let's see, 38 Super, I think. Uh, I requested a nine when uh, Justin said he'd uh, send one of these to us. Just uh, it's just kind of the universal caliber, and uh, it might limit you a little bit in competition. Uh, a lot of people shoot a nine in competition, even with a firearm like this. And you will have to be the expert on that if you do that, those those sorts of games, USPSA, IDPA, and the different things. There are only certain classes where you can use firearms that have certain accessories and all that kind of thing. I think this one is good for, you can still use this one in limited 10, no, excuse me, limited uh, minor caliber. You got minor and major, you know, nine millimeters, minor caliber and all that kind of thing. You get fewer points unless you get A zone hits and they count the same as major caliber. So if you've ever done that before, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Some people choose a nine anyway. They feel like they can shoot it more accurately and they're not going to have many hits outside the A zone. So they're gonna count just as much as a 45 or a 40. But, but I think 40 is probably the most popular. I don't know, let's take a couple more shots with this thing. It's, uh, it is a nice firearm, no doubt about it. We, John and I have been shooting it all afternoon, just enjoying it. Let's go over in the gong. Put a several on him. I feel like you just stand and hit it 20 times in a row. I'm going to try the red plate again. it regularly also oh man let's try a chicken that middle chicken have some chicken for supper there we go <laughs> how about the slider are they up yeah i'll try the sliders i'll show the lower one first oh, i'm empty i'm out of ammo <laughs> we'll try those again uh let me before it gets too dirty and too hot show you this thing it's interesting, uh, this grip, even though it holds these 20 round magazines and whatnot, and I took that off the, the magwell, the big magwell, it was really in the way of my hands, but they come with that. And boy, you got a really big funnel there, okay? But uh, the, the, mag, the, the grip is not that fat to, to handle these big mags, you know? And that's one of the beauties of it. You don't have a grip made and then uh, uh, grips screwed onto the side. These screws are basically, I can't take the grips off. <laughs> Those screws are basically cosmetic. They're not really holding anything on. Okay, <laughs> they really are. If you look in there, there's just nothing there that comes off. That it's, so it's thin. You don't have any extra grips tacked onto the side of it, even though it looks like you do. And most people could, could handle that. It's not a big, big fat boy grip or anything, but yet you get that extreme capacity. And again, since it's for competition, they sell these, uh, these are I think 140 millimeter. They hold about 20, 21 rounds. I think this shorter one I had in it when I started out is a, is a 126 millimeter or something. And it holds 17 or 18. And they make some even bigger than this. They hold like 25 or 26 rounds. They just uh, protrude a little more, okay? And then whatever's legal in whatever class you're shooting in, in the match, okay? So they're pretty interesting, uh, you know, <laughs> They really are, and they're made really well. So let me let me just take it apart now. With a competition gun like this, you know, it's a different different sort of animal in a way. You uh, it comes apart to begin with a little bit like a ni regular 1911, and we make sure it's definitely empty, which it is, and bring back the slide and line up the slide lock there just right, and hold it right there. Push it out. Sometimes you might need a little something to carefully just pull it out. Yeah, but it's not like stuck or anything. It comes out very easily. Okay. 
there you go you see the the steel everything is steel to steel in the lockup okay it's just that lower part that's a polymer and then this is uh, something you can't just get out because of the full length guide rod which i you know complain about a lot of times on a competition gun uh, the one competition gun i had back in the 90s early 90s it was like this you had to use a paper clip you know to get it out so what you do is you push this forward all the way spring ah there we go and you got this little gizmo that comes with it there we go and it uh, clips on right there you got to capture it say somehow and i noticed they make these uh they make a full length guide rod what they call it a toolless one so you don't have to have this and look pretty pretty cool like it would work okay and that just captures it and then you just pull it out okay and then just standard uh, you know bear now it's a bull barrel no bushing you know okay and your 1911 slide 19 looking slide anyway bull barrel and again i don't work for sdi and i'm not selling stis did i say sdi <laughs> stis but from what i've read they are they are made very very carefully by expert gunsmiths they uh they mill out everything very carefully they've hand fit them everything is done in a precision fashion you know if you know otherwise let me know but everything i've read they really go about it the right way okay and they're in texas and then they they build them right you know uh, i'm sure they've had a dog or two and i've not dealt with customer service i don't know you know really uh, much about about that but uh, from all reports, generally speaking, uh, you're gonna find mostly compliments on these particular firearms, okay? Now they're expensive, like I said, that'd be the biggest negative. And uh, I don't know, as I get into it, I, I haven't discovered a lot of negatives because it's a specific firearm, kind of for a specific purpose, okay? And it, it's already pretty much established, it does it well. You know, a lot of people buy these, they can afford them and use them in competition. So let's put this back in, put the barrel slide back together and see if I struggle too much with it. I've had it apart about three or four times here. So I should be able to do it. And that goes back up in there with it. And then the same thing, you've got to capture it again, push it up there and get it all the way in and then pull that little clip off. All right. There you go. So the barrel just it just won't come out unless you do that. All right. So that's that's not a one of those deals. It's nice to have it. It you just can't get it out as far as I know. All right. It's back together. You may have no interest in competition shooting at all ever in your life, and no, you won't. But you know, it's still interesting to see the things that are out there. I think, uh, as I've said before. You know, even a firearm that I, I don't, you know, have a serious need for. Uh, if it's an interesting firearm, if it's well made, well, this thing feels like, it feels like precision, everything you do. Uh, it's interesting. A firearm that works and is uh, well made and, and, you know, it's just going to be interesting to some level. And uh, this is one of those firearms. And, you know, you could use it. Let's go ahead and try that. John and I tried them once. They, they work. Let's put hollow points in it just for the heck of it, even though it's not designed for hollow points. Now this is one, these magazines work okay. They don't work as well with this particular loader. I've noticed you gotta hold your mouth right. But they do okay. But boy, it feeds everything like butter. And we shot a magazine of these just to test it before the video and they did fine. You never know what's gonna happen in the video. I think I opened another, yeah. No, it's just, just hollow points. These are uh, HST Federal. We appreciate the Federal furnishing all this luscious ammo. Look at that. We just had to open another case. Didn't know how much I'd shoot. Sometimes I get going, especially with something like this. Can't stop. STI, like I said, that these, I think, were developed around 1993. It's uh, Sandy, Strayer, and uh, Virgil Tripp were kind of the brains behind this and you can read more about that and then it, it changed hands and you know went through the usual gyrations you know companies do uh now it's i think sti international but uh you know they they established these firearms as quality firearms back in the early 90s and that work 
And I remember when I was competing, when, when someone said STI, I'm going to get an STI, they said it with reverence, you know, and uh, so they were, uh, they had a great reputation, and I think still do. Okay, let's try a hollow point. I don't know why we're doing this, but uh, it's kind of a why not. You might decide this is your ideal home defense firearm. Let's see, let's try a two liter. Yeah. Let's put some of these on the gong. These are a little heavier. They might not get out there. <laughs> Let's try to smoke some pot with one. <laughs> Oh, there's some more pot. Put a couple on the target. After all, it's kind of a target firearm, isn't it? Boy, it feels sweet to shoot. Uh, the slide and everything is fitted, and uh, it's it's just really nice. One thing John and I were going earlier, watch this. You know, you just, and it's of course dirty, uh, but Let's see, I'll just do it like this. Well, now we got it dirty. It just feels like a well-oiled <laughs> machine. It's really sweet. Now, why did I do that? <laughs> just to show you. All right, we're hot. We're hot. Let's shoot something. <laughs> Cut down the chain. I think I'm holding too, I don't know, too high or low or something here sometimes. Uh, it's got a fiber optic front sight. I mean, it's the kind of firearm, if you worked with it, Boy, you could really send them down range. Let's load a few more here. It doesn't take long to empty, does it? It's a sweet old gun. Sweet old gun. Nice trigger. Boy, just for, in terms of fun to shoot, it's easy to cycle the slide. It has a great trigger. And it's the kind of thing you would love to shoot. If y'all recall a video we did uh, ooh, about three years ago, maybe, on this uh, Sphinx. It was a competition model. Uh, that it, it reminds me of that firearm a little bit. Just a really sweet one. And uh, you know, nine millimeter. So it's not going to kick much, obviously, if it's a nine millimeter. These mags here, you get that little. You got to use the uh, the loader up correctly. There's another little twist here, and you got to hold it in for a little bit longer. Oop, let it out there. They want to pop out. Uh, once you get the hang of it. it kind of works but faster than you know not using it I think come on here, here we go uh, precision machine uh, if you're interested in a competition firearm this is one of the choices and you probably already know about them if you're in the market for a competition firearm now you might want a different caliber uh, you might not even consider a nine because you want to compete in major class you want major points for when you hit the target and you don't hit the center of the target and all that uh, but you know some people choose to shoot minor caliber and then there are some classes where it doesn't matter depending on whether you want USPSA or IDPA what kind of competition you're you're involved in uh, but then again you may not even have any interest in competition and you might just be interested in a firearm that's just really well made and has enough weight to where it's just a blast to shoot, no recoil. Uh, yeah, one thing I was, I was saying there, the slide's very easy to retract. So if you have weak hands or you know somebody with weak hands who has trouble when you're working a slide, uh, it's kind of a heavier gun, but it's very simple to work that slide. No trouble at all. The, the spring, almost, it doesn't seem strong enough, really but it's just the way it's set up. Seems abnormally weak. So, pretty cool. 
uh, again, we appreciate the uh, <laughs> the gun parlor in Worcester, Massachusetts. Did I say it right? Worcester. Worcester. Okay. I really get y'all mad at me if I say Worcester. How's that? I should call it that every time I say it. No, it's pronounced. It looks like it's it's spelled that way, but it's Worcester. Worcester, Massachusetts. If you're from there, I think it's Worcester. Okay, is that pretty close? Worcester. But we appreciate the people at the gun parlor. They've sent three or four different firearms our way. You've seen them here. I know the, the governor was one of them. And a nice trooper, Colt, and a couple others. We appreciate that. And uh, we're happy to try them out, shoot them. And uh, it's a great deal. We don't review gun shops. So it works out just fine. Okay. Why did I load all those? Well, I'll shoot a few of them. I might not shoot them all. I might save some for John to shoot some more. He likes this firearm. He didn't think he would, but he does. Let me show you. I mean, it just takes no no strength at all to, to chamber that first round. All right, let's put a couple more on paper here. Look at that little two liter hiding. Back. Yeah. Oh, another pot. Uh, uh, let's go bowling, but rather knock that uh, plate out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get him out of the way. Oh, I didn't bring the ammo with me. Let's put one of those in my mag pouch. There we go. Now you know with the uh, the. Uh, Magwell, and we'll lose that longer pin. You have to have that longer pin with it. You know what? You know what I'm talking about. Most of you, I think, it just fits on there, like kind of like that. And then when you put the next mag in, it makes it an easier target. All right. And that's what I was about to do. Put another magazine in. If you're in competition, you know some people are better at that than others. If you empty your gun, ideally you're reloading before. We've gone over this, I think, in a video tour, messed around a little bit with it, and. Uh, since I'm the one who taught Rob Latham how to shoot when he was a little guy, I thought, you know, I have a little bit of authority in this area. So just ask Rob Latham if, you know, if you don't believe that. I taught him how to shoot. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, uh, you, you don't really want to shoot it dry, uh, ideally. Uh, that's better if you don't. So let's, uh, what should we do? Yeah, let's go ahead and put a round in the chamber. And so I'm, I'm in a stage and I'm shooting along here, you know, pow 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 and if i have to move especially or if it's idpa uh i can't be reloading out in the open and i've got to be behind something but you know whatever the rules are so say i'm moving that's what i want to reload so i put that mag in like that and say i never have to work the slide release the slide or do any of that stuff and i might have two or three or four rounds left in that magazine just depends but i'm going to put a fresh mag in when i when it makes sense okay and so I drop the old one, and I just bring this one up, and I put that other one in there, and I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to go, you know, especially if I take the safety off. So I put the mag in, you know, as I move, I get ready to shoot again, okay? And I'm just, it can be a very uh, smooth thing, I, and I'm not that smooth at it, but it can be very smooth, and it doesn't cost you any time, really, to speak of in the stage, whereas if you're fumbling around and, looking at it, oh, oh, I didn't get it quite in there, you know, then you're, you're taking a lot of time, all right? And of course the mag, well, you know, helps in that regard to some extent. We were watching Todd Jarrett demonstrate reloading at the NRA meeting, and uh, he's a, another hot shot competitor, uh, not meaning Rob Latham, not me, <laughs> uh, but he's another top-notch competitor and was doing a seminar kind of on that and talking about where to hold the gun, not to bring the gun down necessarily and all that kind of thing. Uh, you're shooting and you just turn, you know, you put it in there, you just keep going. And he was giving some really good tips on that, of course, because he's very good at it. But uh, just a little, a little extra charge for that. Oh, boy, he is such a smooth shooter. In fact, it's so smooth, it makes you want to just uh, pretend you have a machine gun. <laughs> I just had to do that. The burn barrel didn't have enough holes in it. 
So, cool gun. We appreciate the uh, gun parlor from Worcester, Massachusetts, uh, providing this. And uh, it, it's an interesting firearm, uh, if for no other reason than it's just really well made. Everything is precision, uh, fitted carefully, you know, hand fitted. Uh, I mean, that's why I think this one, the Edge, this particular model is about $2,200 retail you know, in that category. Uh, so uh, not for everybody, not something everybody wants, even if you can afford it, but just thought I'd make you aware of that because it is a, uh, and I've had requests, you know, get an STI, get an STI. And I went back and forth, like, well, they do make some more practical firearms, uh, like a carry 1911, that sort of thing. But they're best known for for this sort of firearm, and they make a lot of different models of these. Uh, I think they make them with uh, compensators on them and all kinds of things for open class uh, and all that. And this one's actually a little bit more practical. Uh, it would be legal for like limited class, which is kind of a stock class in, in I think USPSA, I believe. Yeah. But uh, but they make all different different models of them. And apparently do a good job on all of them, uh, the STI, and just an interesting firearm. I've never owned anything quite like this, where, you know, you get the polymer, the kind of that hybrid frame, polymer and then the steel, and, uh, you know, precision cut. The, the, the rear sights are really, they're like the old Bomar sights that people used to put. I put those on a couple of 1911s myself. And uh, kind of interesting, they, uh, the CNC, everything. I read that the hammer and trigger or was it EDM machine? They, they use these like electro, was it electro, electric, uh, I forget what that stands for, but it's, it's EDM is electric, can't remember. But it, it, it's cutting it with kind of elect, an electric, with electricity basically. And as I, from my reading, you can get a very, very precise cut on small pieces of metal, like repeatedly. You know, if you're doing things like sears and hammers, and they're all gonna be you know, this, the best that, he, I think it's about the best method anybody can come up with, right? In terms of if you're gonna make a thousand of these hammers or these sears, then that's the way to go if you got the machinery to do it. As far as keeping everything within uh, the correct measurements and all that. So anyway, they, they go to the, uh, to the high level to get everything right from what I've read. Okay, again, I'm not selling them, but I know they're nice guns. It's kind of like having an Ed Brown or a, or a Wilson Combat or a Nighthawk or Les Bear in your hand. You know, what, what are you gonna say negative about it? It may not be what you want, but it's uh, definitely a, a nice firearm. You know, that's and fun to shoot. So pretty cool, just make you aware of it. And, uh, and you know, and we appreciate the, the gun parlor. And uh, again, Hope you'll support the gun parlor. Anybody that helps us, budsgunshop.com, the NRA, get to that link, please join. Uh, you know, Federal provides all that ammo I just sent down range. So we appreciate all the, the folks that help us out. Mostly though, you know who we appreciate? You guys. So come back, we'll do it again. Life is good. you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did. Well I've got you here I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology and they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just want to let you guys know about them. Also you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonora Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com 
We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're gonna wanna think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere. Um, Cause some of these look pretty good.